So during our discussion on work, we talked about there is a spinny rotationally analog of force, which we call torque. And you'll see that there is also a similar version of F equals MA where torque equals I alpha. So getting used to being able to calculate what these torque is, is pretty important. In applying a torque, you can imagine, say you take your hand and you twist something, right? That's a torque. But more often, if something is held in by a hinge or something, if you just kind of push forward with the force, you can also make something spin. And the quintessential example here is a door. We make door spin and rotate all the time to open it or close it. So let's draw a door. Here's a door. And it's got some hinges on the side here, right? That's a typical door. Usually there's, most doors have two, some have three hinges. But in any case, the hinges fixes it at the point so that you must rotate through this axis right here, right? And to make the door spin, we don't actually grab the door and twist it, right? Well, all we do is just push forward, say, on it. Maybe a force like that. Drawing it in 3D, circle X means we're looking at the back of the arrow into the page like that. Maybe you felt it yourself, but you can test it out right now if you want to. Go to a door, and instead of pushing where the, say, door handle is, if you push closer to the hinges, you find that it's a lot harder to make that door spin. It shouldn't come as a surprise that torque can come from force, but it also relates to how far you're applying that force from the rotational axis, measured perpendicular to the axis, clearly. That's why they have to give us the fact that you're pushing some distance away from the hinges. The further out you are, the same force will create more torque. And we often call this vector R, or some people call it the moment arm. Let's flip it around actually, and draw the top view, let's say. So you have a door here like this, and then here's the hinges, and often because of the hinge, we represent the rotation axis with a pivot point, like this little triangle here. The force is applied right here, and then the, this distance is R, like that. So then, if looking in this way, if we're pushing on the right side of the hinge upwards, we expect that the door would spin this way. In class, we also talk about how we can also represent this torque as a vector using our thumbs and finger curling. So to make everything consistent, we define torque as a cross product, right? It's a way of multiplying two vectors together to get a third vector, where the magnitude of the resulting vector, the torque, is the product of the two magnitudes, but also multiplied by the sign of the angle between them, because only perpendicular forces count. In this case, all the entire force is perpendicular, so everything counts. And then the direction of the vector is going to be perpendicular to both R and F. And in this case, to be consistent with our definition of the torque vector with our right hand rule, it has to be out of the page. But instead of just winging it like that, I like to move us into using IJK uh, unit vector notation because that will also take care of 3D cases and it will automatically take care of cases with unknown angles. To do so, we have to define a coordinate axis set. So let's do X and Y like that. And then Z, we can either choose a positive up or down, but to be consistent with the cross products, we need I cross J gets you K using your second right hand rule, I guess, if you know what I mean, with the cross product, if I have i and j like that, positive k must point upwards to be consistent with that. So then we can represent r in terms of i, j, k. So in this case, it's i hat cross with the force, which goes in the positive y direction, or j hat. And this is quite important for cross products, the order matters. So it's always R cross F, R cross F, not F cross R, R cross F. So the two numbers smash together, 
and so does the unit Newton meter. We never convert this to joules. We still call it Newton times meter, even though dimensionally they're exactly equivalent. And then with I cross J, I use this little mnemonic. You may have other system you prefer, but in this case we have we start with I, go towards J, and so the next one is K. So we know it's K, and because we're going from left to right, it's positive K. So torque as a vector then would be something like 47 Newton meters in the k-hat direction. And what that means is that uh, using your first right-hand rule, it swirls around counterclockwise on the page because the vector or your thumb would be pointing out of the page in this case. This one is fairly simple because we do have a perpendicular angle here. But the IJK way and univector way will take care of all kinds of cases in the most general way.